Welcome to Performance Upgrades. I'm your host, Dave Moss. Today's show is brought to you by sportbikewrench.com, performance parts and professional advice. With our project GSXR 750, today we're going to remove our OEM rear sets and then we're going to install an aftermarket set of rear sets. Why? Well, the stock rear sets only provide a little bit of adjustability in terms of the position of your feet and the mount. An aftermarket rear set will give you a great deal more flexibility in the location of the foot peg. So ergonomically, not only can you get your feet and knee in relation to the tank in a better position, but then you can also move the shifter and the brake lever into different positions that you can't ordinarily do with OEM equipment. We're gonna start by taking off the foot peg assembly on the side of the bike, and then we'll take apart the shift rod assembly and fortunately, with our Motion Pro T handles, that will make the job real quick. With these rear sets, we need to retain the shift rod itself, so put that to one side with the kit. Now, in order on this particular model to get the shift lever off, we need to remove a C-clip, and then the whole assembly will come off of the stud that it sits on. Note that we haven't removed the shift arm, nor do we intend to for what we're going to do next. That needs to stay in place, so just leave it there. Now, whenever you're going to put something together onto the bike, and in this case, the rear sets, you want to do what I call a dry run or an assembly, just with all the nuts and bolts in place. So when you take it to the bike, everything is together and you're not trying to figure out what bolts go where. So we'll piece the gear shift lever together in the sequence, and then we'll build the rear set, and then we'll take them over to the bike that assembles our shift lever completely all the way through to screwing the bolt into the location on the frame. These two bolts will attach to the frame. We need to attach the rear set in principle to the block in an arbitrary starting position. We're ready to reinstall the rear set. We're going to put it into the original OEM mounts again as an arbitrary starting point. Next, install the shift lever in the same position as the OEM one came from. Lastly, we need to reinstall the shift rod onto the two fittings. Locate the bottom one first, then move up to the top and locate the top one. Now everything has gone back into the OEM position that it was in. To check, you always want to run through your shifting. So if it's OEM, it should be one down, five up. So if we go up one gear, that should be second. If we go up again, it's third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth. So we know that we have a street shift pattern here. However, because we ride at the track all the time, we're actually going to reverse the shift pattern, so let's put it back in neutral first. So in order to turn it to GP shift, we have to take the bolt out of the shift arm, pull the shift arm off, and quite simply flip it around to the other side, and that will give us GP shift. Now, whenever you move things around and we shift to GP, you need to make sure that you have clearance for all the operating pieces here, for the lever, the rod, and the arm. In this instance, if we had had a problem, Suzuki makes down here three mount positions for the lever itself. Not only does that deal with adjustability in ratio lever to peg, but also make sure that with your shift rod, you're not gonna hit any engine hard parts when you're trying to shift. So either forwards and backwards, we can visually see there's no impairment to the shifting action. We want to go ahead and secure the shift arm here with the bolt, but you can see our rod is in the way, making it really hard to get your fingers back in there to push the bolt through. Because we know we have the right location where we want it here, we can go ahead quite simply, quickly remove the shift rod itself, put the bolt in, tighten it down, and then put the shift rod back on.
Now that we have one side dry assembled with no Loctite, we can go ahead and move to the other side of the bike. The first thing we need to do is build our rear set for the other side, just as the same we did here. So the foot peg bracket is in exactly the same spot when it goes onto the bike. First take away the heel guard, which will detach the rear brake master cylinder from the rear set itself. You will need these screws for the rear set and the carbon fiber heel guard, so keep these. Next, remove the bolts that hold the rear set to the mount so we can pivot the rear set out of the way. Push down on the brake lever to make sure that you can get to the bottom bolt. Now we want to pivot the rear set so we can see it. We need to remove the pin here, like that. Be careful not to lose the washer behind it. Push the pin back out of the rear set, and then your rear set is off. Now, if you have a street bike, you'll find that there is a brake switch here, and the brake actuator is here. On this bike, because it's a project bike, it didn't come with that, so this has been removed. You will also find that there is a spring from the brake actuator that goes down here, so you will need to remove the spring and the holder for the rear brake actuator, and then the rear set will come off and be in your hand like this. Now we're ready to in install our rear set, and we have to go in the reverse order. So the first thing is to go ahead and put the rear set into position on the rear brake master cylinder housing on the clevis. Take our pin, relocate the pin, turn it around so we can see it, Put the washer on, on the backing, and then go ahead, reinstall our cutter pin. Now at this point, you need to flare the cutter pin apart because if you don't, it's really awkward to get behind it. So quite simply, flare it that much and that's all you need to do. Next we come to the awkward part of this particular installation because we have to hold not only the rear set and the rear brake master cylinder, but we also have to bring our carbon fiber heel guard into play. Always start with the bottom bolt. Do not start with the upper because it's very awkward to try and manipulate the master cylinder. So line everything up, grab your original bolt that came with your rear set and go ahead, look through everything, make sure it's aligned properly and try and feel your way with the thread to thread the bolt in. Again, it doesn't have to be tight. You just need to get the thread started. Once that's been done, take the upper bolt, locate that properly, and then thread that. And again, just run that all the way through. Lastly, we'll put the rear set in place and we'll use exactly the same mounting bolt locations as we did on the other side. Just as we did with the other side, we were concerned about clearances. So what's really important is once you've done the installation on this side of the bike, check the clearance between the rear set and the rear brake master cylinder clevis and the swing arm itself to make sure when you operate the rear brake, nothing is hitting on the swing arm and everything sits correctly.